Welcome to Reading Greek. We're going to learn how to read any word written in Greek. Let's start with just a quick intro to the Greek alphabet. The Greek alphabet. Uh, this is a question people often have. Was it the first alphabet? Well, uh, it started to appear around 800 BC, but it wasn't quite the first it certainly wasn't the first writing system. Writing systems do what? They record language. Language does what? It records or somehow conveys ideas. There were other ways to do this before the Greeks uh, created their writing system. Uh, there were hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs are right pictures that can convey a scene, an action, an idea, a thing. There were syllabaries. So uh, there were writing systems that would have one symbol, and it would represent a syllable. So it might have one symbol for the word ha, the sound ha, and then another symbol for the sound ho. That's a sil syllabary. One symbol per syllable. And then were, there were these other things called abjads. Uh, now these, if you know uh, ancient Hebrew, for example, uh, was an abjad in the sense that it had consonants. So uh, the consonant sounds of a language were recorded, but the vowels were not. So uh, Greek was not the first writing system, but uh, it was the first alphabet. And that's why uh, the word alphabet is actually what? It's the first two letters, as you will learn, of the Greek alphabet, alpha and vita. Uh, an alphabet does what? It has consonants and vowels. It has basically a symbol for every consonant sound in a language and any vowel. And then you can take these and mix and match them. So, the next question is, is it a good alphabet? Uh, I ask this sometimes. In a sense, it is good. It's great for reading. And the reason is, when you see a letter, for example, the Greek letter epsilon looks like an E, and it makes the sound E. Wherever you see that letter, it's going to make an E sound. Except, and there's very, very few exceptions, and we'll, we'll talk about those. But for the most part, what you see is what you get. You see the letter alpha, A, that looks like an A, it will make an A sound. Whereas English, when we say an A, we don't know, are we going to say A or are we going to say A? A like in father or A like in eight or maybe A like in and. So in English, for example, uh, sometimes we see a letter and we're not sure what we're going to get. That's not the case in Greek. So it is a good alphabet for reading. For writing. Is it a good alphabet for writing? It is okay. It's an okay alphabet for writing, and the reason for this is there are some sounds in Greek that are represented by more than one letter. For example, the long E sound, E, can be written with three different Greek letters. And so, if someone isn't educated, hasn't seen or read a lot of Greek, uh, if you try to just spell a word based on how it sounds, you're going to make mistakes because uh, sometimes there's more than one option of letter you can put to represent a specific sound. That's our intro to the alphabet. Of course, we could go much further into it, but we're not going to. Let's look at the letters. Let's meet the letters. That's what we're going to do today. So, meeting the letters. Let's look at this. There's 24 Greek letters. Okay, a lot of them look like English letters. Let me just go through them and say them. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Ita, Theta, Yota, Kappa, Lambda, Mi, 
ni xi omicron pi ro sigma taf y fi hi psi omega those are the 24 letters of the greek alphabet now let's notice something a lot of them look english this first one looks like an a then we have something that looks like a b this fourth one looks sort of like a d especially in the lower case now we have something looking like an e something looking a bit like a z something that looks like an h paired with something that looks like a lowercase n with a tail something like an i something like a k something like an m something like an n paired with a v something like an o something like an r something like an s something like a t something like a y paired with a u something like an x and then at the very end there something like a lowercase w so those letters all look english now here's the here's the trick some of them look english but they sound different that's the case there with the second letter of the greek alphabet it looks like a b it actually makes a v sound v and then that second column the first letter in the second column the eta looks like an h or a lowercase uh, n but it's actually a vowel it makes a long e sound then we have uh, this thing that looks like an upper with the uppercase n it does make an n sound but the lowercase is a v so when you see this lowercase v looking letter you have to remember that's not a v sound the v sound we already saw the v sound is up here it's the vita this lowercase v looking thing is actually a ni it's an n sound then we have the thing that looks like a p exactly like a p actually is the r sound in greek so ro then we have this y looking thing uh, paired with the lowercase u looking thing that's a long e sound that's a vowel called y then we have the x the x actually is more like an h in greek it's called a he and then at the end that lowercase w is another vowel sound it's an o sound it's an o sound so uh, we just have to be aware some of the letters we can trust our gut on looking at this page all the ones in yellow we can trust our gut on and all the ones in red we have to pause and think wait this isn't going to sound like it does in english and then of course there's some uniquely greek letters uh, this one is a gamma you might have heard of gamma rays gamma this one uh, is a theta theta then we have the lambda that's the l sound in greek we have uh the lowercase m uh me looks a bit different than anything we know in english then we have this very squiggly one that's a c it's an x sound then we have uh the one that looks like math here that's a p we call it pi in math class then we have the phi the circle with the line through it then we have uh, the one that looks like a trident like poseidon's trident it's a psi so let's oh and then finally yes we have omega there the capital at the end looking like a bit like an upside down horseshoe so let's look at all the letters now just one by one go through the sound they make which is more important than the names in fact uh let me make this point here i want you to learn to learn first to recognize a letter to look at a letter in greek and know what sound it makes and then later you can learn its name and the order it goes in the alphabet those things are secondary the first thing is to be able to actually read it i'll uh, tell you when i was learning greek 
I didn't know the order of the alphabet probably until about two years after I was learning. Uh, I probably should have learned it. I could have learned it. But I didn't because I, I didn't need it. I could read Greek. That was the point, to read, <laughs> to make the sound that I was seeing in front of me. Uh, so anyway, so uh, up here in the front, we have alpha, alpha. It looks like an A, and it makes a long A sound, ah, like the word father. So you might want to say this with me, ah, ah, alpha. Then we have vita. Vita looks like a B, sounds like a V. V, Vita, like in the word violet. Then we have Rama. Rama can make two sounds. It can make the sound of this G kind of caught in your throat there. R, Rama. Like in Spanish, Fuego. It's a G, but you you really feel it in your throat. R, R, R. Fuego, rama. And then sometimes it makes a, a Y sound. Uh, for example, if you know how to say hello in Greek, hello is yasu, ya. It sounds like a, a, a Y at the beginning of that word. Ya, yasu, yasu. That's rama. Uh, when does it make this R and when does it make this Y sound? That has to do with what follows it. And we'll first of all pick that up actually just by listening and I'll tell you about that uh, some other day. The fourth letter is a delta. The delta makes a soft D sound. So it's not a delta, d, d, it's a delta. If you look uh, closely at my mouth, you'll notice when I make a hard D sound, and you can try it yourself, when you say d, your tongue touches behind your teeth, touches what's called your hard palate behind your teeth, duh, duh. When you make this delta sound, your tongue actually touches the bottom of your top teeth, delta. So delta is wrong, delta is correct. It's a soft D like in then. Epsilon. Epsilon, this one here, uh, looking like an E, always makes an E sound. It makes a short E sound, eh, eh. It never makes an E sound. It's always eh. Epsilon, just like in the word elephant, elephant. And then sticking with animals, we have Zeta. Zeta looks like a Z and it sounds like a Z. So just like zebra, zebra, Zeta. Then we have the H looking and the N looking thing. Again, uh, I mentioned it earlier. This is actually a vowel. This vowel makes a long E sound like the word in the word seam. And it is called Ita. Then we have Theta. If the Delta up here is a soft D, uh, like the word then, well, the Theta is the true TH. Like when we say the word think. And so uh, the letter, the name itself is pronounced theta, theta. Next we have what looks like an I, uh, and it makes a long E sound as in seam, just like what did we see, ita. So this one also makes an E sound, and it is called iota, iota. Then we have a kappa. Kappa looks like a K and sounds like a K. So K, Kappa, like the word kind. Then we have Lambda. This is the Greek version of L. Uh, and it makes a L sound, like the word love. Lambda, Lambda. Then we have uh, the Mi. The Mi, at least in the capital, looks like an M. And then it's somewhat unique in its lower case. But in both cases, it makes the M sound. M, Mi, Mi. Next we have ni, looks like a capital N, sounds like an N, and in the lowercase looks like a V, but still sounds like an N. Ni, ni, just like in the word need. Then we have xi, xi makes an X sound. What's unique about Greek, and you'll find out soon enough, is that in Greek they will start words with an X sound. 
for example, the way that you say xylophone in Greek is xylophono, xylophono. When we say that in English, though we spell xylophone with an X, how do we say that X? How do we pronounce it? Xylophone. We pronounce it like a Z, right? So, xi uh, looks squiggly and sounds like an X, and you will find it at the beginning of the word, of words. Next, we have omicron. Looks like an O and sounds like an O. O. Omicron. This is a good time uh, to make a note, actually, about the way that Greeks pronounce their vowels. Greeks pronounce their vowels purely. They have pure vowels. What do I mean here? I mean that uh, when you say a vowel in Greek, when you're saying a vowel, your mouth never changes shape. Okay. <laughs> well, does that happen in English? It actually does. If you think about the way that we say the word home, uh, speaking English, if you say the word home, the O in there, you'll notice my lips start to close. I'm saying home. I close my lips. Home. Before the M sound. Home. Or own. I own something. I'm going to loan you something. My lips, I'm exaggerating a bit, but they're moving on the vowel. That does not happen in Greek. So though in English... Uh, an English speaker will say the word open, like this, open, their lips will move. A Greek speaker would say that O, just O, open, open. And you see I've automatically acquired a Greek accent by making that vowel pure. Instead of saying open, I said open, open, open. So, Omicron uh, is Omicron. Looks like an O and sounds like an O. O. P uh, sounds like a P. So we're going to have to do a bit of switching in our head. Right here we have P looking like math, making the P sound. P, just like in the word peel. And then right next to it, what looks like a P is not a P sound. That is an R sound and it's often rolled. It is called the R. R. If you can roll your R's great. If not, that's okay. Just uh, try to remember, I suppose, that it's that when you say a rolled R, your tongue touches the top of your mouth. When you don't roll your R, your tongue does not touch the top of your mouth. Uh, that's something we can work on and talk about uh, in the future, but uh, rolling your R's should not be your priority at this point. Next, we have sigma. Uh, you'll notice there are three options here. The first option is the capital. The second option is the sigma that you will see at the beginning or the middle of the word. And the third option is the sigma that's always at the end of a word. It's called the teliko sigma, the final sigma. So this letter is a bit of an anomaly in that it has a Two, all, two lowercase versions, and the final lowercase version, the one that actually looks the most like an S, that's used only at the end of words. So sigma, speaking of, makes an S, S sound, C, like the word C, sigma, sigma. Next we have tav, looks like a T and sounds like a T, tav, treno, easy enough. Then we have Y. Y looks like an uppercase Y, a lowercase U, and it is the third way that Greeks can make a long E sound. Y. We had Ita up here. We had Yota up here. We had Y up here. I'd spoken previously about the fact that sometimes Greeks, uh, if they're not educated, make spelling mistakes. Well, this is the reason. If you're just, you know that something is made with, makes an E sound, you don't know which letter to put. Do you put Ita? Do you put Yota? Do you put Y? The next letter is the Greek F. It's called a Phi, and it makes a, an F sound just like an English feel, th, Phi. And then we have He. He is a bit like Rama, and that there are two versions. There's the stuck-in-your-throat version, like in the word Bach, <laughs> 
And then there's the uh, not stuck in your throat version, which is going to be just like an H. <laughs> so the he sound either makes a H or a H. And uh, that will be easier to learn in context, in the actual uh, pr inside a word. It'll be easier to learn how to make that sound. C looks like Poseidon's trident, and it makes a PS sound, like at the end of the word tips, psi. And then finally, omega, the last letter of the alphabet, is a vowel making an O sound. So this is another way to say O. We have omega, and earlier we had omicron. Omicron means small O, and omega means big O, because at one point in the Greek language, uh, omega was held for longer. Omicron sounded like o, and omega used to sound like o. You held it longer. Uh, that's no longer the case. They both now just make an o sound. Moving on, let's just do some reading practice, and this will close out the day today. Here there's no tricks. What do I mean? I mean that if it looks like an English letter, it probably sounds like it. So number one, we have something that looks like an A, and that thing there, after the A, is the delta. Looks a bit like a D. So number one is pronounced ad, ad. That's how we would say that. Number two, we would say ed. Number three, that thing that looks like an I, it's called a yota. That is eeth. Number four, that is oth. Oth. Number five, now we have the delta, that soft T at the beginning of the word. We have some vowels, and at the end of the word we have the zeta, looking like a Z and sounding like a Z. So number five is thus. Number six is thes. Number seven is these. Number eight is those, those. Now in the second column, we're starting now with the Z sound, the Zeta. Number one, we have Zak. Number two, Zek. Number three, Zik. Remember, it's it looks like an I, but it's a long E sound. Don't ever say Zik, Zik. There's actually not an E sound in Greek. The Iota is always a long E. Zik. Number four, zok. Number five, okay, we have kappa, then we have some vowels, and then what's at the end there? That is the mi, mi. That's the M sound. So number five, we have kam. Number six, we have kem. Number seven, we have kim. Number eight, we have com. Third column. We're starting now with the mi, and we're ending with the sigma, the final sigma that goes at the end of the word. Number one, we have mas. Number two, we have mes. Number three, we have mis. Number four, we have mos. Now, for number five, we have the sigma, but this is the sigma that begins or is in the middle of a word. So, number five, we have sat. Number six, we have set. Number seven, we have seat. Number eight, we have Sot. And now, <laughs> we're going to read some real Greek words. Look, 
uh, day one or two, depending on how you did it, of reading Greek and you're ready, learning to read some words. Number one here means together, and it is pronounced, okay, we have the mi, alpha, zeta, yota. It's pronounced ma, zi. Number two, we have sigma and tav, omicron, mi, alpha. It is pronounced stoma, stoma. Number three, we have sigma, then a tav, t, epsilon, kappa, yota, and it is pronounced stecky, stecky. Number four, it's a mi at the beginning of the word, mi, epsilon, zeta, epsilon, sigma, meses, meses. Number five, meze, what's that letter? Looking like a D, meze, this, meze, this. Number six, we have tic, talk, goes the clock. Number seven, we have coma, coma. And number eight, we have stadio, stadio. The Greek word for what? Stadium. At, at least it's the word that stadium in English comes from, stadio. Okay. Here's some reading practice with tricks. What's that mean? It means be careful because not everything is as it seems. We have some of those caution letters in here. For example, in number one. Okay, this word, it looks like a B, but what does the B sound like in Greek? It's called a vita. It sounds like a V. So we have number one, vad. Number two, ved. Number three, vith. Number four, volv. Number five looks like a P. Is not a P. It's a ro. It sounds like a rolled R. Number five is raz. Number six. Okay, we have that ro in the beginning. And then it ends in the thing that looks like a V, but it's not a V. That is a ni, it's an n sound. So number six is ren. Number seven is just re. Number eight is rat, rat. Number one in the second column, again starting with the ni. Looks like a v, sounds like an n. We have not, number one. Then we have net, number two. Then we have not, number three. Number four, okay, we have this knee. We know the knee. What's in the middle there? It looks like a U, but it doesn't make a U sound. It makes a long E sound. It's called an Y. So number four, we have nin. Number five, we have vit, delta, Y, tav, vit. Number six, we have zik. Number seven, okay, we have the ni at the beginning and end of the word. In the middle, the thing that looks like an n and it has a tail, we said is, it's another long e vowel, it's called ita. So number seven is nin. It's pronounced exactly like up here, number four, with the y. Nin with y, and then number seven, nin with ita. The y and the ita make the same sound, e. Number eight, vit. Number one, now in the third column, we have zik. Number two, okay, it looks like an x, but it is a he, it's pronounced h, he. Number three, ha, a signomi, sorry. Number three is he. 
Number four, this one's going to get caught in our throat, is ha. Number five, again, it's going to get caught in our throat. We have ho. Number six, also ho. If you look at five and six, exact same sound, ho, ho. But the om omicron is used in five, and the omega is used in six. Number seven, aha. Aha, I figured it out. Number eight, this is how Greeks laugh in text messages. We might write H-A-H-A. -A. Greeks will write ahaha, ahaha, ha ha ha. Okay, number one of the real word column, column four. Fita rho, ypsilon sigma ita. That word is vrisi, vrisi, vrisi. Number two, he, that's a he, hira, hira. Number three, he, heri, heri means hand. Number four with the omega, ora. Number five, zoro. Number six, with the ni at the beginning, nero, nero, that means water. Number seven, vita ro omicron, vro, then a mi, mi, kappa omicron, ko, vromico. And then number eight, epsilon, sigma, S, tav, iota, t, and then alpha, a. Estia, estia. So here, let's just look at uh, a lot of words. It's the alphabet, basically, with animals. Number one, alpha, a, logo. Number two, vita, vo, vi. Number three, Rama, ra, ta. Number four, delta. Del, fini. Number five, number five, you're not going to do perfectly until you watch the next class. Because in the next class, uh, we'll talk about the combination letters, the ni and the tav together. Uh, which, when they're combined, make a sort of D sound. So, anyway, number five, epsilon, e, le, fa, nd, as, elefandas, elefandas. Number six, zeta, ze, vra, zevra. Number seven, ita, e, then that's a me, e, Mi o nos, y mi o nos. Number eight, cita, sa, la, sia, then a he, he, lo, na, thalasia, he, lo, na, sea turtle. Okay, column two, number one, to yota, making an e sound, e, Po, po, ta, mos. Hippopotamos. I think you know what animal that is. Number two, second column. Kappa. Ka, ni, la. Camila. Number three. Lambda. Le, m, mi. And then Omicron Ypsilon, we'll talk about in our next lesson, it makes an oo sound when, when Omicron and Ypsilon are together. So we have le, mu, and then the thing that looks like a P, but is actually the ro, the R sound. Le, mu, ri, os, le, murios, a lemur. Number four, mar, mo, ta, mar, mo, ta. Number five, the knee looks like a V, sounds like an N. 
narval. Narval. Narwhal. Number six. Xi. Remember, this is the X sound in here. We have it at the beginning of a word. Xi fias. Xi fias. Number seven. This one's not too bad. If you remember that the P looking thing is actually an R. Orca. Orca. Whale. Orca. Number eight. P. Peristeri. 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 Number one in the third column. We have the ro. Ri. No. Que. Ros. Rinoqueros. Number two. Sigma. S. Sar. And then delta epsilon. De. La. Sar de la. Number three. Tav. Yota. Ti. Gris. Tigris. Number four. Ypsilon. One of the long E options. E. Hydrovatis. 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 It's a kind of bug. Number five. That's the fi in F sound. Fi the fi the. Number six. We actually saw in this first column uh, at number eight. Thalassia helona. Number six. Just the he helona. In this case. It's the H version of the he, he lona, as opposed to, let's say, ha, ha, piran, ha. That would be the uh, H caught in the throat. Here it's just a cleaner H, he lona. Number seven, the psi, psari. Remember, the psi makes the PS sound. Psari, psari fish. In number eight, omega makes an O sound. So we have otos, otos. So that's a big accomplishment. We went through the alphabet, we learned the letters, and we practiced some reading. Our next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at those few, there, there aren't that many, few instances in which when two letters are brought together, the sound changes slightly. We already saw a couple examples. We're going to look at those tomorrow. Then we're going to be able to read, at that point, really any word in Greek. And we'll move on from there uh, to learning some things about accent and then just practicing, practicing, and seeing some real sentences and eventually even going through a little book together. Thank you for your hard work, your attention, and I'll see you tomorrow or whenever you do the next lesson.